subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Pleasure coming your way to go through some lessons, exciting ones, of course, with you, my cherished viewers. This is Joy Learning, and my name is Samuel Okwabi. You can call me some works. Today, I want us to be on the Junior High School channel to go through some lessons for Basic 8 Pie Chat. It promises to be exciting, and I need you to stay glued to your device, whatever you are watching or looking at from, I mean, listening to us or watching us from, and then let's go through this lesson and then we'll be sure to take something home at the end of the day. Great. Look at your screens, and we are presented with a very beautiful chart, the chart of a pie, pie chart. We see these things in books. We see it in news items, when you are presenting business news and other news segments. We see it presented. I mean, it looks so beautiful. How did they come by it? How did we do this? Did we just draw a circle and just partition the circle into, into some sectors or what happened? Well, this lesson focuses on what to do to get a beautiful pie chart as this from a given data. And this is what we want to be looking at. So at least when you see this anywhere, you have a fair idea of what went into it. So for the things that we would need, and I will urge you to go get any all of these things because we are going to be using them in our lesson. Pick a rule, pick a protractor, and pick a pair of compass, and a pencil, and a pen. Of course, and a jotter, a notepad, a notebook, or something to work from. Okay, and as you get these things ready, we'll be going through some activities to see how we can achieve these objectives. And what objectives am I talking about? Within a space of 60 minutes or less, we want to do activities that will give us the understanding to be able to draw a pie chart, okay, for a given distribution. A pie chart, okay, is supposed to be a pie chart. Okay, so we are going to be looking at a pie chart. Let me make that correction here, a pie chart. Then when we have done so, we will interpret the data given in a pie chart. Sometimes you are presented with the data in a pie chart. We should be able to also interpret that data. Okay, so we are going to be looking at that one also. And then the knowledge we will gain, will apply them in real life situations, how these things apply to us. Some, some, some people think that mathematics is useless. They cannot apply the things they learn to real life situations. Well, we will see how it uh, relates to us in this, in this lesson by way of a real life activity. So pie chart, of course, is an aspect of stat statistics. I mean, it came from statistics, and so there's a need for us to recap a little about statistics. And so what is it? It's about using scientific methods, okay, that enables us to collect data. And when we have collected the data, we can organize the data in a form more presentable. And we can do some summary of the data, okay. And the same statistical methods allows us to analyze the data, okay. Who is having more? Who is doing less? Okay, how many more do we have than that? We can do that kind of analysis. Okay, and then we finally will present the data by what we want to focus on today by using, let's say, a chart. And this time, we are going to be using pie chart. So whenever you see the pie chart, you'll be able to draw valid conclusions. So you can clearly see from a pie chart which sector is larger than which sector. Okay, then it tells you what it means. Okay, and one of the ways by which we, we do this, we present the data, is by the use of charts. 
So we use pie chart in this lesson to present our data. What is a pie chart? It's an aspect of the broad field of statistics, as we have said, okay? And it simply uses circular, or it's simply called a circular graph, okay? It is called a circular graph because it's done on a circle or within a circle, all right? And it is used to represent a given data or a given information, okay? Pictorially, we present the information given by way of a picture. And we use the sectors of a circle to present that data. So when I showed you a, a, a pie chart, you saw that we have divided the circle into some sectors, all right? So those sectors is what depict or give a fair idea of the information that was presented earlier on before we analyze the data and we presented it in a pie chart. Great. The angle of each of the sector is directly proportional to the value of the part of the data it represents. What does it mean? We did not just partition the circle. We did not just divide it anyhow. We No. The value or the, 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 the sector in terms of their angle, is proportional to the value of the part of the data that they represent. It means that if in the data there were more of the events, it means that the sector of that event is going to be bigger. That is what it means. The more of the event in the data, the bigger the sector. So they are calculated and they are measured before they are presented in the sectors. And we are going to be going through that. It, it, it's not a difficult thing to do, and you will understand it. So that's a, a, a clear picture of a pie chart in two dimensions, in 2D, okay? Like a, a plain shape of a, a pie chart. And that's usually what we present in our lessons. I mean, for school work, okay, we can draw it on a piece of paper, and then we present it by way of a pie chart in this way. Okay, so this a pie chart that shows how much water a certain household uses. So at least from here, you can see that majority of the water is being used in the toilet. Okay, I mean, that's what it tells you. When, once you see the picture, it gives you an indication of what it is. It can speak to you and you can draw valid conclusion from the picture that you see. Okay, so I could have easily asked you which aspect of the usage of water is less. And the picture will tell it all. So that's a 2D presentation of a pie chart. And this is a 3D, a 3D, a three dimensions, okay? Like a solid shape, okay? So again, the sectors are not just generated. They are calculated and measured. So we are going to look at it, how to do it. So that's a 3D pie chart or a pie chart in 3D. And that's another 3D pie chart but this time with descriptions, okay? So like what we're also going to be doing, when we draw our pie chart, we'll be describing the pie chart. This sector, what does it mean? What is it standing for? What is the angle of it? We are going to be describing all of that, okay? So how do we draw pie charts? What are the steps that we need to take to be able to draw a pie chart? So the first step, is for us to find the total of the category values. We are going to be presented with the data or perhaps a table. We will find the total of the category values, okay? And when we get to know the total of, of the category values, then we'll calculate the angle of each category. So like we saw earlier on, for toilet, what angle does the toilet represent? You, you get that? Okay, so we calculate the angle of each category for all the things that are in the table or in the data. And then the sum of all of the category values must be equal to 360 degrees. So for the angles of each of the categories, they should be giving us 360 degrees. That means that if we did it and it's less or more, I mean, there's a cause for alarm. We need to go back and look at the reason why it is so. Then the, the third step, 
is I will now draw the sectors on a circle diagram, okay? And we are going to use the sector angles that we calculated, or sometimes we call them the sectorial angles. We are going to use it to draw the sectors within the circle, okay? Now, there are a few things that we also need to take note of when we are drawing bar chart. And the first one is this. Please, you need to ensure that you have a dotted center. By dotted center, I mean that it should be one center. So you are asking, is it possible that somebody can have more than one center? Yes, it is. How is it possible? When you finish measuring your angle and you are drawing the line for that angle, and that line never ends up at the center of the circle, but it ends up somewhere close to the center of the circle. By the time you finish doing all of your angles, you realize that all of your lines are not meeting exactly at the center of the circle. And that's when that happens. So ensure that you have a dotted center. That means only one center. And that means that all of your lines should all meet at the center. No curve, no bend. Perfectly and straight to the center. Okay. And then again, what should you ensure? Clearly label or describe every sector. So, so sometimes, so that you don't get them mixed up, once you finish with a sector, you describe it. What is it for? Is it for toilet? Or is it for grade A? Or is it for those who are who like red color? Or is it for those who prefer KNK? Describe it. And the data presented will, will show you or will tell you what description you should offer to it. And then the angle to that sector also can be represented. But please ensure that all sectors of the categories must completely and perfectly fill the circle, okay? Remember, when we did the sectorial angles, it added up to 360 degrees. That means when we finish drawing our power chart, all of our sectors should completely and perfectly fit the circle. We shouldn't finish doing all of our sectors and there is some part of the circle left. No, then it's not accurate, okay? Or we shouldn't be doing it, and when we get to the last sector, we realize that the space left is actually less than or smaller than the angle is supposed to go into it, okay? So let's avoid this. So that means that there's a reason for you to learn how to measure your angles. And that's why we need to spend a little time on the protractor. And that's what we are going to use. So you look at the protractor on your screens, and we are going to look at how to use it to measure correct angles. So the protractor to your left on your screen is giving us an indication of the center of the protractor. Okay, so we see that arrow there pointing to the center of the protractor. That place is actually where the 90 degrees line, the line for the 90 degrees, meets with the line for the zero degrees. Okay, so you have a vertical line meeting with a horizontal line. The vertical line is a 90 degrees line. The horizontal line is a zero degrees line. Where they meet is the center of the protractor. And that's what the diagram on your left is pointing to by way of the arrow. Or sometimes, depending on the protractor you are using, you will find out that there is a certain portion or a part of the protractor that appears to be hold. I see there's a drilled hole over there. And that's also at the same point where I indicated earlier as the picture to the left is showing. Okay, so to the picture on the right, you will see they have indicated center hole. Okay, that's also the same place where the 90 degrees line, the vertical line, the perpendicular line meets with the horizontal line, which is the zero degrees line, okay? So that place is the center of the protractor, and that place should 
always and always be placed in the center of the circle. The center of the protractor should be placed at the center of the circle. Okay? And then we begin to do the measurement from there. So great. Now that we've seen that one, let's see how we can do some work with it. Okay, so that's the first question here. The table below shows the distribution of pupils in a JHS Form 2 class who speak the various Ghanaian languages. So that's it. We have those who speak in Zima, those who speak Ga, those who speak Tree. We have Ewe, we have Fanti, and these are their categories. Okay, five people speak in Zima, 25 people speak Ewe, 10 people speak Fanti. That's the data, okay? I'll be presenting that data to you in subsequent slides. What is the question? Draw a pie chart for the distribution. And then we'll find out what is the modal Ghanaian language. And then we'll ask ourselves, if a pupil is selected at random from the form, what is the probability that he speaks Ga? At this point, you can take a snapshot of this question, these questions. Okay, I shall be presenting the table with you to you in subsequent slides or on subsequent slides so that we can present it to work with it. Okay, so then that's it. The first question that we need to ask ourselves is how many people are in the class? Because we need it to be able to find what we call the sectorial angle. Okay, so some of them speak in Zima. How many were they? They were five. Some speak Fanti. How many were they? They were 10. Those who speak three, how many were they? They were 30. All of them, we add them together. Okay, so that gives us 5 plus 20 plus 30 plus 25 plus 10. Of course, that should give us a 90 degrees, right? Okay, so now that we know the total number of people in the class, we can go ahead and find the sectorial angles or the angle of sector. I told you we needed it to draw the pie chart. Okay. So now that's the table in part presented in the question, the first two columns. Now the sectorial angle presented to the right, the third column in red is what we are looking at now. So how did we get that? When we pick a category, say in Zima, how many people speak in Zima in the class? There were five. Okay. There were five. Out of how many people in the class? Out of the 90 people, there were five. So that gives us a fraction of five over 90. Those who speak in Zima in the class are five out of the 90 people or pupils in the class. Okay. And because you are going to put it in a pie chart, we need to convert it to an angle. Okay. So that means the total angle in the circle is 360 degrees. So we find how many degrees of angles or what proportion of 360 is that 5. That's what it means. Out of the 360 degrees in a circle, because we are going to put our data into a circle. So out of the 360 degrees of a circle, what is the proportion of the 5, which is the people who speak in Zima, in the angle of 360 degrees? So that's why we do it. 5 divided by 90 times 360 degrees. Of course, we'll simplify it and that gives us 20 degrees. How did we know? Okay, so usually it is important to get this trick. And what is the trick? The trick is that as much as possible, it doesn't apply to all situations, but in most situations, you will see that the 360 degrees will have or the denominator, that's the total number in the class, in this case, the 90, will be a factor of the 360 degrees. In most cases, I said in most cases, okay? That means it's not in all cases. So I'll easily find out how many times the 90 can go into the 360, and it will go four times, okay? Four times. So that means I'm left with five times four. That gives me the 20 degrees. So those who were speaking in Zima, who were five in all, it will translate into 20 degrees. The same thing I do, 
90 here, 1, 90 here, 4. For those who speak Ga, so I'll end up getting 4 times 20. So you see, I did not alter the numerator. I'm only manipulating the denominator of 90 and then the 360 degrees. So it means that the rest of it, I can just have my way out. Okay, so for 3, it's going to be 4 times 30. That gives me 20, sorry, 120 degrees. And then for airway, it's going to be 4 times 25. That will give me 100 degrees. And then for Fanti, it's going to be 4 times 10 or 10 times 4. That will give me 40 degrees. Okay. So now, I have been able to translate the number of pupils into angles. And I'm saying that the sum of these angles should be 360. Okay. So 20 degrees plus 80 degrees plus 120 degrees plus 100 degrees plus 40 degrees should give me 360 degrees. If it is, it means I'm on track. If it is not, it means I have to go and check something else. Something may be wrong. It has to be 360. Remember, we multiplied all of them by 360. Yes. So the sum at the end of the day should be equal to 360. Mathematics speaks for itself. Okay, now that I have my angles, I can go ahead and begin drawing my, uh, my pie chart. Okay, so once I have to start, I'll start with a circle. And look at the circle. Okay, and let me make it plain or no, no, uh, make you aware of this. That in here, for the purpose of you seeing what is being presented here clearly, I have a quite deeper center. So you could see clearly from your screens, okay? But I spoke against it, okay? That your center should be just a dotted center, okay? So that compass pin that you used in getting the circle is enough. And when you are drawing your lines to the center, make sure that they all get to that compass pin where you stood to draw your circle, okay? All right, so that's my circle. And once the circle is done, I'll draw a first radius that will enable me to start doing my measurement. Okay, so you can do it to the left, you can do it to the right, at the top, at the bottom, or somewhere along the diagonal, anywhere. Okay, it means I'm going to begin measuring the angles from this line. Okay, so I pick my protractor like we indicated. Okay, I have my protractor here. I told you that the center of the protractor, and I've shown you where the center of the protractor is, that center should exactly and perfectly be placed on the center of the circle. And then the horizontal line, the zero degrees line, should also fall perfectly and exactly on this first radius that I've drawn in the circle. Okay, and I can take the measurement of the angle that I'm going to deal with. Okay, so now there's it. So this is what I have. I'm going to begin measuring the first angle. For Enzima, what's the angle? 20 degrees. So I place the center of my protractor at the center of the circle and I make sure also that the zero degrees line is also perfectly on the on the radius of the circle, I mark my 20 degrees. And when it is marked, I can now conveniently draw my line. Okay. So that's it. Okay. So, so I don't forget it. I can indicate that this is for Izima and it is 20 degrees. Okay. Now, the new radius that I have drawn for the enzyme, the new one, I'll continue my measurements from that line. I will not still, you know, stay at the first line, the first radius. I'll move on to the new one and do the next angle for Ga, which is what? 80 degrees. So, the center of the protractor should go to the center of the circle perfectly and exactly. And then the zero degrees line, on the protractor should also be placed perfectly and exactly on the radius, the new radius in this case. And then I measure 
my 80 degrees. When I get it, I mark it. And after marking it, I can now draw my angle to read. Okay, so I can draw my angle to read this way. And this is for ga. Okay? And it is 80 degrees. So I don't forget us. I, I don't forget something. This is for people who speak Ga. Of course, we expect their sector to be bigger than those of Inzima. Why? Because they are more than those who speak the Inzima. I move on. Now to my newest line, my newest radius. Okay, so as we do it, we keep moving to the newest radius or the newest line. Then I go to three, and they were 30. Same way, the center should be at the center of the circle. Center of the protractor should be at the center of the circle. And then the horizontal line on the protractor should also line on the radius, the new one. And then when you are ready, you can mark out your 120 degrees. And when it is marked out, we draw our line, making sure that it is going straight to the center. Make sure it is going straight to the center. Okay, so this is for 3 and 120 degrees. Okay. Some people want to do this one. It's, it's no problem. You can do it. I prefer that when you finish, then you draw a smaller circle around all of them so that it becomes a well-presented work. Okay. Clarity is important. Okay. So, so we do. Then we move on to airway, 100 degrees. Okay. So same thing. Now, same thing. But you need to know that now you need to move to the newest line and mark out your 100 degrees from the protractor. And when that is done, now we can now connect that one to the center of the center of the circle. And make sure that your line is going to the center exactly and perfectly. Okay. And so we are done for that of the people of Elway and they were 100 degrees. Okay. Good. I'm left the last one, which is Fanti. And this is what I was saying. The last part of the circle that is left must, must be 40. They must be 40. Okay. With a measure, it should be 40. It shouldn't be more or it shouldn't be less. If you measure it and it is more or less, it means that one or two of your angles already measured. It's not right. So you have to go back and look at it. So let me measure mine and check whether it is exactly 40. Because it's the last one left. And it should be. Yes, it is. It is. So there will be no need for me to draw a new line. That 40 is lying perfectly on the line I began for Inzima, the radius that I began with for Inzima, is lying on it perfectly. And so I know that I can be rest assured that I've gotten a very good pie chart. And that's for Fanti, and they were 40 degrees. They were 10 in the class. It translates into 40 degrees by way of angles. Okay, so that's it. That's it. I have my pie chart well presented here. My, my 2D pie chart. Okay, what's the next question? I was asked, what is the modal Ghanaian language? And what is mode? The event that occurs the more or the most. In this case, the people who speak the most Ghanaian language. Okay, which Ghanaian language are people speaking it the most? Okay, so to speak, that way rather. Which Ghanaian language are people speaking the most? Of course, if you look at the chat itself, it will speak for itself, okay? You can see which side appears to be the biggest. What is it? Okay. So I want to guess that you are saying that the modal Ghanaian language is three. Even from the data presented, there were more. There were 30, more than all the others, okay? So the modal Ghanaian language is three. Then we also ask in question C, if a pupil is selected at random from the form, what is the probability that he speaks Ga? Probability. Okay. So it means that how many people are speaking Ga out of how many? That's probability. The number of events 
over the total number of people. The number of events over the sample space. So how many speak the gun? There were 20 out of how many in the class? 90. That's all. That's all to read. So the probability that people who speak now, probability of gun will give us 20 divided by 90. Of course, that can easily be simplified to give us 2 on 9. 2 divided by 9 or 2 over, over 9. So that's it. As easy as it is, we are done. It's no big deal at all. And you can also do it. Okay? You can also do it. So we are done with the first question. And I want to give you some three minutes so that you practice something for me. A very short one. Not much. Just four categories. I want you to use a table as we see to draw a power chart for the distribution. And when you have drawn the power chart, use the information to find the percentage of the vehicles that were lorries. So this was a traffic survey. So they stood at a certain junction and looked at how many cars were passing. And they had this data. So the cars, 15 of them came to pass, maybe, perhaps. Then those who were lorry, maybe 12 of them. Those that were a bus, maybe 8. And then for bicycles, 25. Okay, so we are going to use it to draw a patch. And I want you to make an attempt at it for me within the next three minutes so that we come back with it. Less than a minute to go. Wow, that's three minutes already gone, and we'll come back. And for those of you who are making an attempt at the question, seriously, you know, busy yourself with it, I'm so glad you are still with us and you were at it. 
I'm sure some of you may have completed it. Well, maybe some others may not have completed it. If you are not done, I want you to go ahead, continue working, okay, as we also try to do it side by side over here. At the end of the day, we'll see whether we all land at the same place. So let's go through the process to be able to look at this one. So of course, we will start by looking at the total number of people in the class. Okay, so it wasn't a class. Total number of vehicles that use that junction in that survey. Okay, so that should be giving us 15, okay, those that were cars, those that were lorries, those that were bus, and those that were bicycles. So 15 plus 12 plus 8 plus 25, that should be 60, right? That should be 60, okay. Because it's going to help us to, to tell what proportion of, let's say, bus is out of or can be generated from the 360 degrees. So that when partitioning the pie chart, we can do it appropriately. Okay, so now we can present our table in this way, okay? And I want to believe that you got these figures. So the angle for car was 90 degrees. Of course, like the trick I gave you, try working on the denominator and the 360. So zero here could have canceled this zero from the 360. 6 here, 1, 6 here, 6. And that, that, that's all you will need to do. That means that for the rest of the vehicles, it's going to be 6 times the number of vehicles. That's all. Okay. So for car, 15 times 6 gives us a 90 degrees. Okay. Then for lorry, it's going to be 12 times 6. That will be 72 degrees. Then for bus, it's going to be 8 times 6. That will be 48 degrees. And then for a bicycle, it's going to be 25 times 6, and that should be 150 degrees, okay? So don't worry yourself disturbing the numerator. Be concerned about the denominator and the 360 degrees. It makes the work more flexible, right? Okay, so did you add up? It should be giving us 360 degrees. I hope you, you got that, okay? Like I said, if it is not 360 degrees, something is wrong, and you would need to look at it. So you pick the compass and you draw your first radius. I mean your first circle. You draw your circle with a convenient radius. You pick the compass and you draw your circle with a convenient radius. It's advisable that you make your circle quite bigger. Okay? The bigger it is, the more convenient it is to work with than when it is small. When you draw a very small circle, and you are going to draw or measure a very small angle, you will be struggling and you may get it wrong. So make the size of your circle appreciably big enough so that you can conveniently work your way through it. Okay, so when it is done, it means that we can now move ahead and get our first radius to read. Okay, and when our first radius is ready, we will be ready to also measure with our angle. So. For the first angle, it's 90 degrees. We have gone through the process. So I'm going to conveniently measure my 90 degrees. And take note, these things are measured when we are scoring or we are marking. The examiner will measure them. So don't do it the way you like it. It has to be what it should be. Okay. So... That's what I get for the first one, which is a car, okay, and it's 90 degrees, okay. Then 72, so I move on to the new line now. So I move here, my center, the center of the protractor at the center of the circle, and then the zero degree line or the horizontal line on the new line, I can now measure 72. I mark it off, okay. And after I mark it off, I can now connect it to the center. Make sure it is going straight to the center. Okay, straight to the center. Don't let it bypass it. Okay, so that people will appreciate what you are doing. Let me clean this excess. Okay, and redraw.
let me redraw so that people will know that perfection is of essence. Okay. So you discover that when my line passed the center, I needed to clean it so that I make sure that it goes straight to the center. You two should ensure that it is so. Okay. So this is for lorry and 72 degrees. Then for car is 48. I place the center of my protractor at the center of the circle. My zero degrees line on the protractor is lying on the new radius for lorry and I'm ready to measure for 48. I mark my 48 and after marking it, I can now connect it to the center. Okay. All right. So that's it. And it is for car. 48 degrees. And let's do the last one, bicycle. And like we have said, the angle for bicycle is 150 degrees. That means the space left, which is the last one, should be exactly 150. Okay? Exactly 150. At the worst moment, it should be plus or minus 1. Okay? 150. 49, 151. Some of these ones are pardoned. Okay, but let's strike for perfection. Let it be 150. Okay, so let me measure my and check for it to see whether it is 150. Okay, let me check. Yes, so that's 150 degrees. Okay, so perfectly done. So you two ensure that when you are doing yours, you ensure that you make it as perfect as possible. Don't give room for any inaccuracy because it will cost you some precious marks. Okay, so that's the, the par chart. That's the par chart. Now they ask what percentage of the cars that pass were lorries. Were lorries. So look at the the, the table again, because you are going to get that for me. Look at the table again. And the lorries, they were 12 out of 60. Out of 60 vehicles, lorries were 12. By angles, lorries were 72 degrees out of, 70, out of 360 degrees. So once that is done, please, within 30 seconds, try and work it out for me. Okay, so let's see what we're expecting. What we're expecting from you. Okay, so the percentage of vehicles that were lorries should be 20%. How did we get it? There were 12 lorries. So 12 out of 60, 12 over 60 times 100%. Remember, we're looking for it in terms of percentage. So we multiply by 100%. Okay, and when that is simplified, that should be giving us 20%. How? This zero can cross out with this zero. Okay, then we are left with 6 here 1, 6 here 2. Okay, so that gives us 2 times 10. And that leaves us with 20 degrees. Sorry, 20%. So the percentage of vehicles that represented lorries was actually 20%. Okay, if that's what you got, then congratulations. And I'm glad you got that. All right. Okay. So that's the end of that question. Now, I want to introduce to you the aspect where we are presented with the power chart and we have to interpret the power chart. That means the power chart is given to us and we are going to use the power chart given to answer some questions. It means we are going to interpret the power chart. Okay, so we are doing some analysis from there. So look at it. Let's read it together. Ready? And we go. The power chart shows the distribution of 
textbooks to six classes. A, B, C, D, E, and F. That means class A, class B, class C, class D, class E, class F in the school. Okay, so that's the part chart presented. Now we are asking, if class D was given 720 textbooks, how many textbooks were distributed to each of the remaining classes? Then, what is the average number of textbooks distributed to the classes? So when we are able to know the number of textbooks given to all the classes, we will be able to get the average. Then, the third one, how many classes had less than the average number of textbooks distributed? Please take a snapshot of this one and let's go through it and then we see. So the bar chart is presented, classes are presented and their angles are shown there. Class D was given 720 textbooks. So let's look at the number of textbooks for each of the class. That's what we are made to, to find. So we'll begin from here. The total number of textbooks distributed is equivalent to 360 degrees. Okay, the total number is equivalent to 360 degrees. Remember, we distributed the 360 degrees for each of the various textbooks. That was why all their angles filled up the circle, which is 360 degrees. Okay, that means that by extension, in terms of value, in terms of numbers, the total number of textbooks should also be equivalent to 360 degrees. Okay, so we are going to use proportion to work out this. Because we are told that school D had 720 textbooks. And that school D, its sectorial angle was 80 degrees. Okay, so that means that when it was distributed, when the 720 textbooks were distributed into the 360 degrees to get the angle, they got 80. That was when they got the 80 degrees. So that 720 translated into the 80 degrees. Okay, like we saw earlier on. The number of vehicles for, for let's say, bicycle, it was 25. It was translated into 150 degrees. This is what that also means. 720 textbooks also translated into 80 degrees. If that's the case, then what about class A? Because this was for class D. What about class A? So for class A, they were having an, an angle of 80 degrees also. Okay? So then it means that if more, let's divide. Okay? No. So we're going to look at the total number of textbooks, okay, which is a 360 degrees. So the total number of textbooks also will translate into 360 degrees. So if school D alone, which is 80 degrees, gave us 720 textbooks, then what about the total circle, which is 360 degrees? So if more or less divide, okay? So that leaves us with 60, I mean 360 degrees divided by the 80 degrees times 720 textbooks. If more, let's divide that kind of proportion analogy. Okay, great. Then we'll work this out and that will give us 3,240 textbooks. That means for all of the classes put together, they all received or they received 3,240 textbooks in all. Okay. This is enough information to help us go through the rest of the questions. So now the number of textbooks for the remaining classes. Let's now work it out for each of the classes. So for class A, now that we know the total number of textbooks for all the classes, okay, for all the classes in question, we can conveniently do the analysis and get for each of the class. So for class A, 60 degrees, right? So 60 out of how many degrees? 360 degrees, because that's the data available for us. Their angle was 60 degrees for class A out of a total of 360. We multiply it by the total number of textbooks because we are finding the proportion of textbooks that went to class A out of the total. Okay, so we work out this one and then we will arrive at 540 textbooks. So that will be for class A. And that's what we are going to do for each of the classes. 
the angle for that class divided by the 360 degrees multiplied by the total number of textbooks. Okay, so that does it for class A. Now, let's go to class B. And the angle for class B was 50 degrees out of 360 degrees, of course, times the 3,240 total textbooks. Okay, that will also translate into 450 textbooks. Okay, if you simplify this, that's what we are going to get. Like I said, this once we, we see the way out, we, we, we keep going. Okay, we keep going. And then for class C, of course, I can ask you to do this on your own to see what you are going to get. So you can try working out for class C and let's see what you are going to end up with. It's the same way. Look for the angle for class C divided by 360 and multiply it by 3,240 textbooks. And that should give you the answer. And so what is the answer? The answer is supposed to be 378 textbooks for class C. Remember that for class D, we were given. So there will be no need for us to do for class D. We could rather skip to do for class E. Okay? So what is it going to give us? Again, the same process, isn't it? So that will be giving us, uh, or perhaps we could develop a different way or a different option. Because for class E, we are not given the angle. Okay? So since we are not given the angle, we need to find the angle. But it was the only angle not given. So because it was the only angle not given, when we add up all the rest that were given and subtract from 360, that should give us the angle for class E. Okay, so that's what I have indicated. That means that the angle for class E is actually 58 degrees. So if we know that it is 58 degrees, then we divide the 58 by 360 degrees. We multiply by 3,240. That leaves us with 522 textbooks for class E. Interesting. Then we do the same for, you know, the last class, which is F. That one, we're told of the angle. It is 70. Okay, so same way. Work it out and let's see what you are going to get for that one. Work it out and let's see what your response will be. Of course, it's going to be 70 degrees over 360 degrees. You multiply by 3,000. 240 textbooks okay so if you did that i'm sure you should be getting an answer for three for 630 textbooks 630 textbooks so now we know for each of the classes it means that we can find the average the second question was for us to find the average number of textbooks and what does average means it means we simply divide the total by the number of occurrences, by the number of events, or by the number of classes, specifically for this one. Here we're dealing with classes. How many classes? Six classes from A to F. So total number of textbooks divided by six classes. So it's going to translate into 3,240 textbooks divided by six. Okay, and so when we do that, the computation is going to leave us with 540 textbooks. That means on the average, on the average, each class received 540 textbooks. And that's the average. Okay, it doesn't mean all of them 540, 540. As we saw, some were more, some were even less. But that's the average. It means that when we put all together and we divide by the number of them, we end up with 540. 40 degrees. That's the average. Good. Now that we know the average, the next question was asking for those that got less than the average. How many schools got less than the average? So the average is now 540. Okay. And so the number of classes that are getting less than 540 are actually going to be three. And which classes are they? Class B, Class C, and Class E they are going to be those that got less than 540. So three of them, three classes, they got less than the average number of textbooks. So that's what we have gone through. We have just analyzed the question, okay? That we have just analyzed the or interpreted the part chart given to us in the question. What I want you to do now for me, 
is to interpret this one for me by way of an assessment, okay? And take a snapshot of it. Let's read it together before you take the snapshot, okay? So what we are going to do is this. Let's read it. Ready, we go. The power chart below shows the program analysis of the Joy Learning Channel. Yeah. The channel telecasts 12 hours a day. So for the whole day, the channel telecasts 12 hours. Okay, so 12 hours is allocated for all these programs. Okay, so that's a power chart there. So we have some for SHS hour, it is 75 degrees. We have JHS hour, it is 60 degrees. We have a variety, the angle is not indicated. We have Edu News, 45 degrees, and we have Revision, that's 60 degrees. Okay, what I'm asking is that, what is the size of the angle marked variety? Easy to do, right? Easy to do. How many hours in the day does the channel telecast the revision show? So in the day, out of the 12 hours, how many hours is allocated to the revision show? Then finally, I'm going to ask you to give me how many hours more does the SHS hour exceeds the edu news? So if you check by the angles, SHS hour is 75 degrees, edu news is 45 degrees. So definitely we can see that SHS hour has more time than the edu news. So we are asking by how many hours? Okay, by how many hours? By degrees, we can tell 75 minus 45 degrees, but by how many hours? This is what I want you to be doing for me by way of an assessment. So take a snapshot of it, and when you are ready with the answer, please post it on Joy Learning TV, Facebook, YouTube, and I will look at it. I will be so glad to get back to you and congratulate you if you did well or encourage you if otherwise. This is Joy Learning. And make sure that every day, at least you work out one mathematics question. Okay? It helps you to build your confidence in mathematics. We keep learning here. It's been exciting coming your way. And I'll see you again at another episode. My name is Samuel Okwabi. When you see me, you can call me some books. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.